Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Well, happy Monday, Calvary. Thanks for tuning in for your word for the day. I am excited to be sharing with you today that we're launching into a new study here with Word for the Day. We'll be going through the book of First Peter. And uh, if you're following along and even had a bookmark in James, good news, it is the very next page in your Bible. So you don't have to navigate somewhere insanely new, but we're continuing this walk through the New Testament looking at the book of First Peter. And before we start jumping into some of the passages and what they mean and stuff, I want to just pause and, and give a little foundation for the rest of our study and understand who wrote this and why and what are the things we should expect here because I always think that having that foundation leads to a better understanding later on when we're looking at the specifics. So who wrote the book of 1 Peter? Well, if you were to take a stab at it, you might guess Peter. Congratulations, you're correct. It was written by uh, the Apostle Peter, the, the apostle who denied Jesus uh, uh, you know, before his crucifixion and grieved that. Uh, but we see what Jesus does is he uses Peter as this example of redemption and restoration. That, that upon his resurrection, he meets and he, he encourages Peter and he asks Peter, do you love me? And Peter repeatedly says, yes, Lord, I love you. And Jesus challenges Peter to go lead the church. And that's exactly what he does. Peter becomes the, the first kind of primary leader of the early church as they're learning to establish themselves as followers of Jesus. Peter is that, that lead character uh, pushing them forward. And eventually gets this point of writing uh, his first of, of two epistles here. And, and I love the book of First Peter because I think in the days we find ourselves, it is insanely practical for us. Because Peter is challenging Christians in the day that he's writing, and I think consequently to us as well. And the challenge is, how do you live well for Jesus in a world that's opposed to him? If that's not practical, and if that doesn't relate, uh, maybe take us a little step back and look at where we find ourselves. Because we have that same challenge and desire. How do we live well for Jesus in a world that's increasingly opposed to him? And so he's going to get uh, very specific, uh, but also get very helpful through this. Is, and we're going to find ourselves in passages that are going to step on our toes because it challenges us in our obedience to Jesus and the way that he wants us to live. And so he's going to get specific with some examples of how to live well in a world that is really messed up. See, Peter's writing in a world that is mostly being led by the Roman emperor Nero. And if you don't know much about Nero, uh, you can poke around a little bit, but the, the short side of it is, is he was a power-hungry Roman leader who hated Christians, so much so that one of the, the kind of the stories that sticks out most frequently is at one point he gathered up a bunch of Christians and put them up on posts along the road and lit them on fire so that people traveling at night would have illumination. He used Christians as street lamps. He hated Christians. And so when we talk about our world is so bad, they're... There's Christians that have gone before us that have had it far worse. And so we can use the instructions they receive to challenge us. But Peter also starts with something that we have to know first and foremost, before we get into what we do, we have to understand who we are. And he opens his epistle this way. He says, Peter, an apostle of Christ Jesus, to those who are elect exiles of the dispersion, he goes on, but he starts with that statement, an apostle of Christ Jesus. And Peter spends the first chapter or two just really diving into what is our identity? Who are we? And if we don't answer that question with the first description of who we are as followers of Jesus, but instead we answer that we're American citizens or we you know, have this political label or we have this job title or we're a parent to this many children and we have this characteristic, we've got it backwards. He says, we have to start with the reality that we are sons and daughters of the living God. We are followers of Jesus Christ. And that is the thing that defines everything else. And so we get to spend some time going through the incredible hope that we have, the, the call to living a holy life because of that identity. But that's where it starts for us, is understanding that our identity is in Jesus, not any other worldly, earthly, self-proclaimed title or label so let me challenge you with a few things. First, let me challenge you to be reading the book of 1 Peter. It's not incredibly long, but just spend some time reading it. And maybe just try and read the whole book in a week and do that a couple of times over the next month or so as we go through this. But secondly, let me ask you today, 
what's motivating the decisions and the way you live your life? Is it by one of the labels of you have this job title or this title of parent or family member in this way or you have this political title or, or this uh, connection over here? Or is the thing driving your life the fact that you are a follower of Jesus first and foremost? Because I know that if we want to live well for him in a world that's increasingly opposed to him, we have to start with that as our identity and let everything flow from that. Hope you enjoy uh, this look at the book of 1 Peter, and I hope it challenges you to live well for him.